Hi everyone, my name is Anastasia, welcome back to my channel and today we're going to be talking about the books I read recently. I haven't done this in a while, I did a recent reads video back in March and then I completely forgot about it and I realized that I haven't talked about the books that I've read in a while. So I have a lot of books to talk about and I'm gonna split that in two recent reads video. In this video I'm gonna talk about um, I think three or four books I read and three books I reread all during May, I believe. So the first book I want to talk about is From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Now I believe that came out on March 22nd and the moment it came out I bought it on my Kindle and I read it. I devoured it in like two days. It's a vampire fiction based novel but a high fantasy one and it's about a girl that has been raised as the maiden to be sacrificed or given to the gods when she turns 19 I believe. Um, so she's kind of like the chosen one but instead of being kind of praised and pampered she's actually being very isolated from everyone she's not allowed to do a lot of things she's really she has to follow the rules and her life is really dark and lonely which kind of reminds me that this book has a lot of trigger warnings for um, mental and physical abuse. So basically this girl um, is really questioning whether or not um, her purpose in life is what she wants and then she suddenly gets a new guard who kind of challenges her and pushes her and basically he's um, every male character of Jennifer L. Armentrout's combined. So if you have read Jennifer L. Armentrout's other books such as the Covenant series or the Lux series, you know that she is really great at writing romances and I think in this particular one she outdid herself because it was really funny, it was angsty, it was really slow burn and it basically started in a brothel slash gambling den. So it had a really interesting beginning. I can't say a lot about these characters but I can tell you that they were really really intriguing and layered and complex, especially the main character, I really liked her because she was really vulnerable but also really strong, she would do anything for the people she cared about and she really put herself at risk but she was also so strong because of all the things she's been through. However, one could say she was a little bit too trusting. As I said, this is a vampire based high fantasy novel because you have two different kingdoms that are consisted of different variations of vampires. Um, I can't remember all of the names but um, it's the people, there are the vampires who drink each other's blood I believe and there, there are the vampires that drink other people's, blood, um, other people's blood, then there are the vampires whose blood has been completely sucked dry, so they're the craven. It's, it's a whole thing, like, there's so many different types. There were a lot of twists and turns in the novel, which I have to say I did see them coming, but the way they evolved and the way they were beaten um, continued to have that surprise element and that really intriguing element that made me not really mind. Like I would know how it would go, but the way the scene was written made me still really enjoy it. I can't say I didn't enjoy this book, I really really did, like I couldn't stop reading, I read it in two days, I loved the romance and I really loved the characters and the whole thing that was going on inside um, the palace, was it a palace? I think it was an estate where the main character was being held. It was a really interesting novel, it was really really slow though, so it's not for people who like really fast-paced novels because it was, it kind of centered around first getting to know the characters and then kind of getting in, getting along with the plot. However, my main, main issue with this book was not its predictability at times, it was actually um, the world building. Now I know this was uh, Jennifer L. Armentrout's first high fantasy book, which is why I'm kind of her, kind of letting her off the hook because she still did a fantastic job and I had a hell of a time reading this book. But I 
finished the book, it was a long book, and I still did not know all the clans of vampires and I still did not know exactly what was happening. Like, I think I have in my notes that I still don't know what some of the types of characters do and what's their point. I just know names. And I also got really confused with places at times. So while this book really built up the characters and really built up the story, it still felt like an introduction to this world. Like I felt after 500 or 600 pages, I can't even remember how many it was, I should know more about the world um, that I spent my time in. I'm mad at it because I still I have so many questions, but I'm hoping that the second book in the series will kind of answer them for me and rectify everything that happened in the first book, which ended in a big ass cliffhanger. Next up we have Starry Eyes by Jen Bennett. So after I read From Ash and Blood, I really wanted something lighthearted that would kind of take my mind off the heaviness of that book. So I picked up Starry Eyes by Jen Bennett and I fell in love. It was so good and it wasn't even like my favorite part wasn't even the romance. Which reminds me I should actually tell you what Starry Eyes is about. Starry Eyes is about two best friends that kind of have fallen out with each other and end up going to the same camping trip where they kind of are stranded in the middle of a thing of a mountain or like a forest and they embark on a journey to go to, you know, to find their way back. It was really, really fun. Um, it had a lot of tropes but it was really fun because I've never read a camping um, book ever before. It was so adventurous and it had one of my favorite um, romance tropes which is, well two of my favorite favorite romance tropes which are um, friends from best friends to lovers and hate to love and it was just so good. Um, it was the banter between the main characters was really really funny because they hated each other but they also were like used to be best friends so they knew each other. There was chemistry and there was familiarity and it was really good. Um, the adventures were entertaining, they went through caves and they had to fight off a bear, not fight off but scare off a bear and they come out next to a river and it was so 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 amazing. That being said, the only small 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 issue I had with it was there were some particularly cliche characters that kind of helped the plot along. There was the mean best girl best friend, um, she was the mean witch girl that took all of them to camp for camping and there was um, the main character's crush who was the total joke really pretty hot guy but in reality a jerk face so there was this two characters that were just a cliche that were obviously used to move the plot along I still like the book I found it so good I was fangirling the whole time the romance was so sweet and it was so fun and entertaining if you like um, a good camping um, friends taking a trip book like um, Amy and Rogers epic detour you're gonna like this one the last book I read during that time was Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo which I started because I love the Six of Crows trilogy but I really need to read the Shadow and Bone um, it was duology, Six of Crows duology <laughs> but I really need to read the Shadow and Bone trilogy in preparation for the new TV show that's coming out so I read it and I liked it. It was good. It was, um, I'm used to Lee Bardugo's beautiful, intricate writing in Six of Crows, and I believe that's the same that I heard about Ninth House. However, in Shadow and Bone, her writing was a bit more in the simplistic side, which I understand because it was her first novel out. In terms of writing, it was okay, it didn't kind of like blow my mind. The world, on the other hand, was really good. It was really interesting to delve more into the world that I fell in love with and kind of became, became terrified of in Six of Crows. Um, the different clans, is it clans? I can't remember exactly the name, of people with the different powers and the political system and getting to know the infamous Darkling who has stolen every single person's heart in this fandom. I did not understand. Um, to be honest with you, Ma I liked Mal more. <gasps> Not that I 
loved Mal either. He was just okay. And the dark green was okay. I just didn't understand why he had such a pull on Al Alina. Alina? Alina. The moment she went there, she was just craving for his acceptance and his attention. And the moment he would look at her, she would melt. And I was like, cool, yeah, I mean, yeah. In terms of the main character, Alina Starkov, I have heard that she goes through a huge development, character development throughout the trilogy, which I'm hoping to see because in the first book she was kind of pushed around a lot, mainly by the Darkling, and she gave up really easily. That's the thing that I did not like, the fact that she liked to not be inconvenienced. If she couldn't do something, like she tried once or twice, she was like, ah, I just I can't do it, why are you pushing me? Which I did not like. So I'm hoping in the next few books she becomes a bit stronger with everything she goes through. As a first book, I gave this one a 3 out of 5 stars. It was an okay beginning. I'm hoping to be blown away by the next books. And after that, I was in need of some good rereads because I was in isolation alone and I needed comfort reads. So I read Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. Fangirl is about um, Kath who is in her first year in university and she's really struggling with transitioning from being in high school with her family and her friends and go and her twin sister and going to university where she's basically by herself and she needs to rediscover the world and make new friends and acquaintances and she's also a really really renowned fan fiction writer it's a beautiful story every time i read it i take something new from it um, when I first read it, I loved it because I was also very socially awkward and really scared of going out to people and I was also a writer um, and I still have the same scared feeling that Kath has that whenever I write something or I do something, it's not good enough and I'm often really frightened to get out of my comfort zone so whenever I read about Kath, I kind of remind my, it reminds me of me like first year of university or coming out of high school so it's a bit of a nostalgic feeling but also the romance between Kath and Levi is the most adorable romance I've ever read about like there are those amazing steamy angsty slow burn romances and then it's this freaking adorable romance like Levi is the cutest boy alive their back and forth always kind of makes me feel really warm and soppy and all those nice warm feelings then I read Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins for a readathon I participated in which did not go well um, I used to love Anna and the French Kiss, it was one of my favorite books and then I let, I didn't reread it for like five years and I came back to it now as a more evolved reader and <sighs> it was so bad and it was so disappointing because I used to love it so much but it was so problematic, it um, kind of portrayed really bad relationships between girls and a lot of jealousy and cheating, um, like emotional cheating and all of that. There was no meaningful scene between girls, there was no meaningful relationship between any of the girls, everything was so superficial except the um, main romance. And the last book I reread was Wait For You by Jaylene. Wait For You is about 19 year old Avery who is moving away from home to kind of get away from a really kind of dark past and she's moving away to university and then she kind of, it's about her meeting new friends and meeting this new guy that kind of, I don't know what's happening between them, he kind of really wants become friends with her and he, like, he keeps asking her out and it becomes like a running joke of hey will you go with me? Uh, no! So it's really cute and it's more about learning to like come out of your cell after you had a traumatic event happen to you and it was it's a really nice story and I've read it I think over 10 times at this point I read it for the first time when I was in high school and since then I literally read it twice a year I love it a lot and I don't it's I love Jaylene's writing style so Jaylene is Jennifer L. Armentrout but that's the pen name she uses to write new adult I honestly read the book like 50% because of Cameron 
Ah, he's so good. And I love the banter between Avery and Cameron and that small bet they have of, hey, will you go out with me? Oh no. And he keeps doing that every single day and he kind of makes her breakfast and he's like, um, it's, it's really nice. And I love the friendship between Avery and her two friends from university. I know I'm supposed to know all the names because I read it over 10 times, but I'm really bad with names. It's a really fast read, so if you have nothing to do in the next few weeks or like at any point during the summer, you should definitely read it. And that was it for my first, my second actually, um, recent rereads, recent rereads. Um, thank you again for listening to me bubble and expect another recent reads video really soon after this one because I have a lot of books that I read and I forgot to talk about. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!